Hello everybody, I am Alphabird. So, today's video we've got the beginner battle group for the 9th Guards Cavalry. And just before I start talking about the deck in more detail, I just want to have a bit of a chat about my feeling about 1v1 and how I want these decks to be viewed. And I, myself, am struggling to play in quick, quick play in, in 1v1. I did take a break from the game, but I have been playing a fairly regular number of games in 1v1 uh, over the past couple of weeks. And I am a past Steel Division League player. I played in Division 3. I've actually beaten the odd Division 1 player. Not very many, I would say. Probably two. Um, but, you know, I, I have scored victories against that level of player. And I seriously struggle in 1v1 right now. I cannot play 1v1. So, this beginner battle group today, the Knife Guards Cavalry, is, it is... It is set up, in my opinion, so that you are supposed to be able to play in quick play. I haven't adjusted it to focus solely on the AI, but I feel like I can't recommend the deck to be played in quick play because I personally can't win with this deck. I haven't won a game with this deck in quick play. I, I tell a lie, I won one game, but that was because the opponent's UI uh, bugged out and he couldn't order any units onto the battlefield, so I won by default. I haven't won a game with this, uh, probably out of about eight test games. So <laughs> how can I recommend anybody to go into quick play? I, I can't win with this deck, so, you know, and... Yeah, there, there it is. And I'm sure the really experienced competitive players out there might say, well, this deck's awful. But this, this deck's spo supposed to be about being e an ease to play. It's not supposed to be like the most competitive meta Knife Guards Cavalry deck you can put together. It's supposed to be fairly easy for beginners to be able to pick up and play. So they don't have to use extensively hard microing units to get the kills. Um anyway let's talk about the deck itself so into the recon tab um, we've got actually quite a nice recon tab here and i'm not taking advantage of the one slot point which is unfortunate the kazaki red resvedka are a unit i could opt to put in there with the eight pps each but they are quite expensive for that 30 points you're paying like a recon tax so you've got plenty of fantastic infantry as well as the kazaki ppsh infantry if you look at the comparison they're 10 points more they're basically the same squad without an at grenade so it's tough to recommend to put that infantry unit in there in the recon tab you've also got the t70 res vedkar i wouldn't mind putting that one in but i think as a newer player you might struggle to use that unit because it's you know its range is low its arm is low so that doesn't go in there the valentine three again i feel like that's a really good well that that could be a good unit on paper it seems like a good unit but it doesn't seem to perform to me i feel like the lack of he um shells doesn't help especially for new players the rate of fire is fantastic but you're only getting 75 mils of penetration so you do need to get close to things it's basically an anti-light vehicle and light tank unit but it is incredibly slow you need that if you're going to use a sort of anti-light vehicle unit, you need it getting to the front really quickly because light vehicles are very fast. So they get to the front quickly. Uh, if you're unlucky, they've destroyed everything before the Valentine 3 gets anywhere near close. So that's not really a unit I could put in there. The T3476 Rizvedka, I think that could be a unit, but actually you do get a fair few tanks on this deck as well. So again, I don't really think that's... That's worth putting in there so in the end we we end up with the osna sapari uh, they are in the ford gpa um it's the fastest transport that they've got access to and it is amphibious so you can go across water in this which is good you might not use it as a new player but sometimes you can get across into a sneaky position that the enemy knight might not realize it does have a radio as well which is useful to help out your artillery artillery although the icon's not quite displayed correctly i'm sure there is a recon slash radio icon and it has the two TNT shells, you know, as per the Sapari. So it can do, you know, the, these are to be used at close range and then also provide recon. Uh, so good to use in forests and close range buildings. Osna snipers, they're for the long range sniper engagements, you know, things like church towers, uh, buildings that are a thousand meters away so they can take advantage of those sniper rifles. Into the infantry tab, you've got a lot of infantry in this 
deck and it specializes in cheap infantry that's it's kind of this is the the unique aspects of this unit the, the cheap infantry and the infantry tactics kind of oriented gameplay of this unit you've got kazakis they're 20 point squads they're they're good because of the price not necessarily because the squad's like really good the same with the svt versions you've got to watch out for the range here this is quite a difficult deck for new players because of the range issues in a lot of cases and because uh, of another issue that come, come on to dealing with heavy tanks so you've got to be careful with the kazaki svts you've also got to be careful using the kazaki ppsh they are your dedicated cqc infantry so we'll go th we'll go through uh, the kinds of infantry we've got kazaki which are your main sort of line infantry and the longer range infantry because they've got the dp28 gun svt are your medium range infantry uh good for cities and the edge of forest but or not kind of you don't want these fired at long range or you don't want these spotted and being fired on by machine guns at 750 meter range because they can't fire back so i think cities are probably some of the best areas to use these units in and um, we'll come on to the osnas in a moment then we got sapere these are kind of your afa cqc units they've got the tnt shells to work in forests and buildings but they do also have the dp28 so they can work at long range but these are better at cqc and I think in AFAs, these are guys to put in the forests. Sap Sapri Comrotti goes with that. The reason I put this in there as a new player is I think the Panzerfaust is more effective than having smoke as a newer player. I think you're you're going to fall back onto a Panzerfaust more so than use the smoke on an infantry leader. Uh, we'll then talk about in B phase, we've got the Kazaki and then they're your sort of mainline infantry and then the kazaki ppsh they are your cqc infantry to be used in heavy forests and in cities and then in c phase we've got 32 units of kazaki mozins they're basically the same as the kazakis but they use mozins instead of svt so they're not quite as good they come in a slower transport but they are 15 points so you get you know they're very cheap so you can use a lot of them and all of the infantry if you look are all very cheap infantry the most expensive is the sapri at 25 points we'll now talk about the osnas this is basically an anti-tank infantry unit it's here for the bazooka you don't want to get these guys um spotted prior to using that bazooka because they aren't going to hold up in infantry combat especially at the moment because the time to kill is so quick and if you don't spot when this unit gets fired up fired on and call it back into cover or call it away from color or cover or out of line of sight you're going to lose this unit so this unit is to only be used for the bazooka really and you're going to need those bazookas because of the 180 millimeters penetration they can take out pretty much every single unit in the game including the king tiger uh, so you've got a card in a and a card in b Moving on to the tank tab, plenty of Shermans, okay? And Shermans are fantastic uh, kind of anti-infantry role and the CQC kind of role against tanks, but they're really going to struggle at long range. Even at 1,500 meters on the main gun, they're still going to struggle against Stugs. Um, they can take out Panzer IV Hs and, you know, enemy sort of medium tanks, you really want to be fighting closer range maybe about a thousand meters i would say on average really is where you want to fight with your emptures i've got some emptures comrotis in there to provide some extra leaders but also to use up all the sherman cards because shermans are that good i think you should use all the cards up and i've given you the first the the first card of emptures at one star just to give you those extra shermans now I wouldn't normally do this, I would normally have them at two stars and I would tell you that you don't need that many tanks, but because your infantry are so cheap, you will actually find that you're going to use all of the infantry up and then you're going to have loads of points left over and this division doesn't exactly have a hell of a lot of supporting equipment to go with it, so you're then going to focus on tanks and... So you need some extra tanks, otherwise you're going to run out of tanks and infantry. Uh, so that's why the Emcher in A phase are at one star. You've got the Comrotti there, that's six tanks in A phase. And a lot of the times you will use all of those tanks. And then in B phase, I've got three cards of two star Emchers. 
Now you can only use these in B phase. Uh, you can't select C phase tanks or C phase emptures. So I've given you the three cards to use them all. And I think two stars is, is good for the emptures. I think having them at two stars buffs the rate of fire buffs the accuracy it really helps them out in the close quarters combat so i think taking them at two stars is more worthwhile and then the b phase card of t3476 that is there in b phase at no stars because really it's a c phase card again you can't take them in c phase so i've selected that to be your c phase tank uh, it's just you can't take it in c phase so it has to be in b phase so really the order that you should use your tanks is always sherman's before this card of t3476 this should be the last type of tank that you use and i mean you could up that these but i don't personally think the performance is that much better when you up that them so and you come up against the same problem that actually your infantry in c phase is incredibly cheap that you can get away with calling in um to let, let's count so you 110 points on t3476s so you're five points short of bringing in two t34s and a kazaki mozin because we're on flatline income so that's how cheap the units are so you, so you might feel that if you spam these out, you actually run out of tanks otherwise, unless you have them at that no star. And I don't really feel the benefit is there on T-34s in particular to give you them at one and two stars. So hopefully that gives you a good picture of why I've chosen that tank tab. In the support tab, this is where some people might really object to what I've put forward. I don't have a Kazaki Maxim in this deck, and I don't have OB-25s in this deck, which might be slight error it's quite possible i mean you don't get a lot of long distance firing infantry the kazaki are long distance but your svt are medium to short your osnas don't get into infantry combat your sapri you shouldn't rely on them as long distance they're more cqc so you know the pbsh they're all short range you don't get a lot of fantastic long range infantry so the maxims could help you out but i feel like you need all the tanks and the infantry because they're so cheap you're going to end up using them all so i didn't end up having the points to put in there for maxim and i didn't really feel like dropping other units elsewhere I, again the reason why i haven't given you a one point uh, recon slot i think you could drop a tank perhaps you could drop the card of t3476 or maybe the card of Emcha Comrotti, as long as you're very good at using your Sapri Comrotti and your VZ VOD. And then you could fit in, you know, a Maxim card. So yeah, it's strange not to have a Maxim card in there. And I think more experienced and advanced players would definitely call that out as an issue. I think against the AI, though, it wouldn't be too much of a problem. And the other issue as well, OB25s. I feel like at the moment, the 1500 range these these units i am not sure about how effective they are they die i feel they die much more easily than they actually pick up in damage than kills so they're 40 points they're kind of there to you know counter anti-tank guns and infantry guns at long distance, the counter the, the HMGs of the enemy. But I just feel like they go down before they kind of do enough damage. So I don't have them in this support tab. Again, it might be something that a more experienced player might disagree with me. I think in this deck, playing against the AI, AI I think you can avoid using them and yeah then they're, they're not in there but again these two could be cards that you could swap in there especially if you've played a little bit and you're more used to using the infantry and you can maybe drop a card or drop a card of tanks i think you could put in these units what we do have in the support tab the Ognamachike standard uh, the combat you i think you definitely need this since your reliance on infantry it's an infantry squad so up those infantry makes such a huge difference 
and then the support card as usual you could also be a bit more tactful and get rid of the support card uh, by bringing the matador schnabs on your um artillery but this is not really focused for somebody to do that um so i opt for the easier option of just having bfa support cards in the anti-tank tab we have the m42 guns these are really it's still re useful in 1v1 but they are nowhere near as good as they used to be you have to be careful how you use them you have to put them into positions where they can ambush tanks especially where they're going to be parallel to a road so they can immediately hit a side shot um so yeah you have to be very careful about where you put these at guns now no longer you can put them at two kilometer range um it's a good thing at the end of the day, but it does question make me question the unit now. Um, and what I think are two stars, you know, you use them sparingly, use them in very good ambushing positions, and they can pick up kills. And if you do pick up a stub kill or a Panzer IV H kill or a Sherman kill, then you are making quite an efficient play with that point cost. And then I've put the ZIS-3 guns in. When I played the game, I didn't originally have... the. Or when I played the game, I'm going to show you. I didn't have these ZIS-3 guns in the deck. And the reason I've put them in is I felt the anti-tank options at long range were not quite good enough in the deck that I played. Uh, I only had the M42 guns. Then I was kind of relying on the tanks. And then the, this single card of Lag-3 with the AT rockets in A phase. And the tanks, I just couldn't engage. I was up against Stug 4s and I couldn't really engage with the Emchers. That took the tanks completely out of the picture. Uh, the Osnas, uh, I was ending up relying on my infantry AT equipment, which is very hard as a new player. You should try and get used to it, try and get in the habit. Because if you are going to progress into 1v1 against human players and against, uh, especially in quick play and rank play, your infantry micro has to be on point. It's ridiculous how good you have to be with those infantry units. Um, and so I, my, and my M42 guns, they can't, they couldn't take out Stugs unless it was a massively ambushing shot. So yeah, the ZIS-3 guns have now gone in the deck and hopefully that gives you some extra AT options. Again, they're not great. You know, they're going, you're going to be relying on the APCR shell. So you need to engage this at a thousand meters because I think even the AP shell, I don't think that's enough penetration at 1,500 meters. It is against the Panzer IV H because they're 75 millimeters of armor, but that's going to have drop off. Um, pretty certain that's got drop off. That 105 millimeters is at, I think it's at 250 millimeter, uh, 250 meter range. So it's got drop off. So the penetration chance is not fantastic at 1,500 meter range. So again, you need to get these into kind of ambushing positions. The good thing about them is this can actually be used as a infantry gun as well so it does kind of take some of the pressure away from not having the ob25 because the zis3 can actually perform that function as well although you really don't want it to perform that function in this deck you do want it as an anti-tank gun and then in b phase the saving grace you get the zis2 gun which is the best um russian at gun really in the game um aptr shells at a thousand meters are fantastic ap shells you see i hadn't noticed this and i was letting them engage at 1750 meters and at the time i think i was comment i was taking note that they were not penetrating those stug fours and now it's because i wasn't taking account of those range changes they definitely have increased the skill floor in this game it is a good decision it makes the game more interesting compelling and strategic in my opinion but it does raise that skill floor it makes it more difficult because you have to be fully aware of what range your guns are uh, engaging in you've got to be aware instantly because the enemy player if you're playing quick player ranked the opposing player damn knows what ranges they're firing at and they know how to use their guns effectively it's something that yeah but anyway there's this two gun it is a great gun you can engage at long range against probably most things up to a panzer 4h and i think you can get away with engaging stug fours 
at that range and stuck 3g's you should be fine at but anything above that i think the tigers uh, the panthers you won't be able to engage frontally at that range but you will be able to pick off side shots very easily and the tigers uh, they have much higher side armor like 80 millimeters of side armor if i remember right so they can still get the side armor kills but it's a little less um effective than against a panther at side armor but if you're engaging a tiger or a panther or anything above that frontally you know an ice too if you're mirror matching then i really think you need to use the pcr shells that are restricted to a thousand meters it's so close and i yeah it's difficult now guys it is difficult xenot 37 mils in the aa tab it's obvious xenot 85 mils this is your other good at piece um but be aware that at 2000 it doesn't fire at 2k kilometers so just be aware of that but it is a, a good anti-air piece you only get one card so i feel beef well you can't use them in c phase so it has to be b phase just to give you those four uh, at guns oh, sorry well yeah at guns in a sense aa guns artillery tab so the vz vada there for your b phase infantry commanders now the the off map off map is not as good against the ai so if you are playing this against the AI, I think you could take out off map. The reason is AI doesn't tend to clump its units like a human would, or it does kind of clump its unit, but the AI will attack across the whole battlefield. Whereas a human player will focus on one area of the battlefield and it will try and push that area and overwhelm your forces in that single area. Whereas the AI, it will try pushing one area and, the, and then try pushing the other area and then a push in the center and then the left flank. And the, so off map doesn't work as effectively as against a human player because that player will focus on one area of the battlefield where, where that human player thinks it will do the best. So if it's an infantry division playing on Slutsk, it will focus in the town areas because that's where an infantry division will will do best so your off map can be you know can slam into those uh that town area and be really effective against the ai it's not that way because the ai will still even if it's got an infantry attack will uh, an infantry division will attack over the open ground with it so you, you could get away with removing that and replacing it with other units here i would have loved to have put the katusha in but i don't i didn't really wasn't really able to get that in the deck that could be a useful unit against especially against tanks as well because although it won't kill tanks it will certainly suppress them up and perhaps make them reverse in odd ways so that you can get those side shots with the the at guns uh, but here we've got the su-76 mm -M in the artillery tab i think these are really good artillery units they're the only well actually not the only ones in with the radio in this division you can pair them up with the osnaz though they do get the radio um so they can be you know really effective and i think they're a great artillery piece and then in c phase we've got the a19s again a really good artillery piece and they're here in c phase to help you out and to really you know hammer the infantry hammer the at guns infantry guns static guns even hammer your tanks um ha hammer the enemy enemy tanks and you can put them on counter battery or, or fire fire at will to to help you out Finally, we move on to the air tab, and we got a, a fair few mix of planes here. The Lag Three is definitely your main one of your one of your main anti-tank uh, weapons in the deck. So try not to lose these, but also you are going to need them to take out enemy heavy tanks. Now, I've given you one in A phase and two in B phase, but three is still not a lot. So you might try and hold off to B phase and then take a card in B phase and a card in C phase. But personally, I think you need a card in A phase. I think you need a card in A phase. So A and B. I've then given you the LA-7 as a fighter in A phase. It's 125 points, so you can afford it on a single tick of income. And it's the best fighter, much better than an, a lag. Um, yeah, it's very fast, so it can catch planes it's got better agility its resilience is better than the lag as well so it is just a better fighter than the lag three 
uh, in B phase, we spoke about the rocket plane. I have brought you in some more LA-7s as fighter bombers. I didn't pick these in A phase because you only get one of them. So I picked them in B phase to act as your first bomber in the deck. But also they can be used as a fighter as well, just in case you lose those LA-7s in A phase. Or if you've picked one LA-7 in A phase, but then you need a bomber, well, you can pick the LA-7 a fighter bomber, but you can always use also use it as a fighter in B phase. And then in C phase, I picked the TU-2S with the 1,000 kilogram bomb. That really helps towards the end of the game, kind of clear up enemy infantry. Again, what I was saying about, you know, you don't have the best long range infantry. So these bombers can really help you out. And they can also do great damage against tanks. So they are a weapon, to be fair, to be used against tanks, which some people might not like. But yeah, they are they are effective against tanks. So... A C phase card, you get six of them, you get a lot. The only problem with these two airplanes is you can't afford them with a single tick of income. You could put in the TU-2S with the nine 100 kilogram bombs, but I think having the 1000 kilogram bomb is better. Uh, that's my opinion, but I think you could get away with swapping, um, perhaps even swapping the LA-7s in B phase. To be fair, that's not a bad option. But then the thing with the LA-7 is it is working as a fighter as well. So I think I will stick that as it is. Uh, keep, keep it as it is, but, but you could make that change. But going into the game against players, whether it's the meta and me trying to play this deck in a meta that just doesn't suit it, perhaps that's the case. But right now, I personally... I couldn't recommend you to go into quick play with this this deck. Uh, I don't think you would enjoy the experience. I think it would put you off playing Steel Division 2 at 1v1 level. So I'd rather you just not even do it. <laughs> play this against the AI. Play against friends if you want to. If you're just looking for a deck to play in skirmish and have fun with, you know, this, this is what it's there for. The idea in the past was that you could take these into 1v1 quick play and they'd, they'd be a starting point for you to play them but uh, yeah I, I don't recommend you do that okay so we are playing the ninth cavalry we're up against the panzer layer we are flat line versus vanguard so if we resist an early vanguard attack possibly with light vehicles we might be able to push up push on and get the victory that's going to be hopefully the task. I'm also playing an infantry division versus a pretty heavily armored division. So probably want to concentrate on the town and maybe the right hand side as well. Um, might be able to, the dog is like charging back and forwards. Okay, here comes the charge. reply with some light vehicles man oh man what is this okay let's try and get those forwards stop doing that don't know why it did that So, don't know whether we've taken them all out or not. All right, let's get Mantai here up. Let's get an Osnaz in there. Nope, we haven't taken them all out. But, you know, we've got Shermans going in the area. So we should be able to control that. He's got nothing on the left. Maybe we can exploit that. 
but he's singly going for a charge, it seems like. Let's try and get this M42 gone up as well. I'm just going to rely on my Shermans clearing them up. In fact, I'm going to send them through there, bring in a replacement. In fact, we've already got an Osnaz in there. Let's try and get a couple of Ognamachiki out to the right. Um, we'll get some actual infantry in the town. Uh, we might try and get into that position there. Okay, that is clear. Let's send the Shermans off into the left. We'll push forward the Sapere. Try and get them across. Uh, Anti-air, let's get that up. Into a reasonable position. Ah, I always find this area not so great for anti-air. Okay, Pumas, you can easily take those out. Come on, turn. Turn. Ow. That's the slowest turn in Sherman I've ever seen. Rear shot. Oh, takes him out. Maybe I should have just reversed there, but I thought I might somehow be able to get out of there. Okay, here comes the aircraft. Oh, God damn it. I can't select my aircraft. Okay, now I've got him. I'm going to try and get him to... F I don't know what the hell took him out. I'm going to try and get him over my AA. Okay. Right, so that's what's shooting me. And for D on the road. Let's get off the road. Trying to two on one me. He's desperate to take back that left hand side. He lost some sapper over the right. Okay. Now this is like he's totally recovered here, but he must have spent a lot. Where are you going? I told you not to go over there. Too late on the smoke, I think. What are you doing? Stop. What are you doing? Stop. Okay, we might be able to get this other one. Hopefully. We need to concentrate on what's going on here. Oh my days. Lots of effort. I know he's in a pioneer, so I don't think I try and fall that back. No idea what's going on here. Now we're getting enough that uh, he's taken back that side. I need something to take out of Panther. I don't really have anything to take out of Panther. Like, that's why I brought you out there. Shoot! Shoot! Oh my God. Get you back. Get off the road! Get on the road! Get on the road! Where's my Osnaz when I need him? He's got one bazooka! He's one man! Oh my days! I'm floating so many points while this is going on. Okay, my pocket on the right is okay for now. I need that panther to go down. I'm pretty sure I didn't order you anywhere. Oh. No, not you! Oh my days, get out! Get out! Oh, I lost him! Okay, let's be careful. Keep the amateur back. We can take out their Pioneer Führer here, though. Well, 
unfortunate. Don't have another op M shot. I've got a Sapri Comrotti that can get up there. You might see the left coming. Okay, there's still a panther somewhere in here. Oh, I forced you back. I don't have... I can bring up a Sapori Comrotti. We can get that Pioneer Fuhrer. That's at least taken away his leaders. Um, okay, Sapper, you're engaging. Don't want you engaging. Um, I should probably push the right. I don't really have a tank over there. My air force is still down. Yeah, Amshers have come in. I'm hoping his Panther's still on the right. These are all half tracks, so we should be able to take these out. Yeah, the Panther's still on the right. Sapri Comrotti might be able to take out that Panther if I'm lucky. I have run out. Okay, that is still a Puma. We can still take that out. And for D on the far left. Need to get you into the town ASAP. God oh, damn it, he went down so quickly. Guess that is a stern pioneer. Ah, oh, shit, I'm in range. Okay. No, I want Osnas. Oh, God, he's got a lot of tanks in there now. Um, let's go PPSH. He gets on the road. Uh, how do I get rid of Sturm Pioneers? I need... Uh, play 7. Oh, he's just going to control the road now. There's not a lot I can do there. We're going to have to go right. Uh, we need something to do something on the right. Panther. Let's try and get out of range and somehow bait him into a side shot of some sorts. You guys are too late. We're going to need some smoke. I'm also going to need an off map. Now becomes a problem where, how, what do I do? How do I do anything against this division? He is going to run out of cash. He's gone through his majority cash phase, so he's going to struggle to afford stuff. I've just got to be very um, efficient with what I do here. Best I can do is just get some smoke up, I think. Try and double this. He spotted that M42 gun, which is annoying. Okay, I think he's made a mistake there. The LA7 down here should get on the back. No! Oh, okay, thank God. Oh, something's firing on something. Come on, come on. I know he's got AA. Oof, he's got some horrible AA down there. Get out. Okay, we're going to have to push this side. There's like nothing going on here. So let's just bring our units up. I'm going to run out of smoke. Yeah. 
What just went down there? No idea. H. Ah, oh, damn it. Troops went down. We need to get rid of that unit there. Why are you not firing? You've not quite got it in the line of sight. I don't even know whether I can actually destroy him. Um, I might be able to sneak some kind of side shot on him. Ah, oh, he's got troops behind me. Bring in another Kazaki. A okay, right hand push. Successful. Thank God. He is going to now try and get re reinforcements down. I didn't think he's got much down here, if anything, so... Let's try and get down there ASAP. Come on, come on, come on. Move. Oh, he's dropped Stern Pioneer off. Luckily, we've got a leader in there, which is... I often forget leaders. Um, the Osnash should take care of the half-track. Yeah, nice job. We need to get rid of these. 54% chance. That's not too bad. I have got a ZIS-2 gun. I need to get the ZIS-2 gun. In. Okay, the PPSH should be able to contest somewhat against the Stern Pioneer, especially if they stay close. Yeah. Um, we can get an off-map. Try and get an off-map down there as well, hopefully. You can tell I'm taking this one a bit more seriously. I'm really trying to win this game because I've had terrible, terrible luck against uh, units so far. Again, uh, playing as Knife Cav. Come on, Osnaz forward. Yes, good job. Push, push, push. Let's try and exploit. He's probably going to send in a big tank. We're going to need some anti-air up here on the, the right. I'm going to try and leave one back. Okay, right hand side. Sapri finally gone down. It's to be expected. Um, we can at least get one tank in here. 13 11, 21 minutes. I don't think I can. Well, actually, maybe I can hold for that long. Now let's bring in one of these. Where are you going? Into the center. Let's see whether we can push that hill. God, Panther on the road. Ah! Uh, we're gonna need an off map. We're gonna somehow. Oh, God. God. Somehow have to. We can LAC. Okay, here comes the tank response. Hopefully we get those out. He is weak. Like, he's concentrating his forces in certain places. It's just, I need to get through. Especially now he's got that panther on the road. But I don't think I can get my Osnaz to him. Um... Let's try and strengthen the right a little bit. Yeah, I'm hiding behind buildings, um, but we got a lot of space here, so we can just 59 and hold. Uh, what's he firing on? What is he firing? Oh shoot! Is he firing on the T34? Facing the amateur. Okay, 
Okay, I am a little bit worried about this left. We've lost that little position there, so let's just bring in some SVTs. Ooh, I didn't actually mean to unload on the road. 15%, no, get off the road. Don't notice him. Oh, damn it. God, there's just a lot of tanks built up. I'm going to try and unload there and push him through on foot. Just need to hold that for as long as possible. I'm going to want one unit back here, just in case. Maybe even a couple of units. He's definitely going to push for that area. My AA is very up front, so that could well go... Ah, oh, shoot. I didn't unload something there. Oh, thank God. We took the Sturm Pioneers down. I was very worried about those. Uh, that should give us the flag back. We're still holding a 15-9 here. That's really good. Ooh, quick. I noticed. Get out before the Panzergrens get there. Move all the way down there. Please do it quick enough. He's got back that flag. Okay, you move forward. You might be able... Come on, move forward. Hey, Osnaz, get the panther kill. Get the second one. Reload. Get it. Oh, God damn it. Right, I need off map. ASAP. Okay, everything is going around here. Don't want the combat being seen. Yes, DKF says sevens in the area. Off map's going to have to do the job. Get. Early, further forward, please. Come on, emergency off map. Cut off. Cut them off. Come on. Come on. We we'll lose the AA, I'm sure. Why can't you... Lost that area there. I'm losing some units. He is pushing me back, but I still got a 15-9. Damn it, the infantry. Okay, that is down. Come on, Sis2. How the hell did you not get the kill there? I guess he's on APCR. It was a, a nuisance. Okay, the fact that the uh, T76 is there is actually probably helping me out a lot. Getting the forests. M42 come across. Oh, it looks like my Osnaz went down. Okay, we're going to lose that side. Okay, you need to come back. Ah, uh, looks like that went down. I'm celebrating. I shouldn't be celebrating this, but I've lost so many games with the ninth cab. I'm celebrating. This is a beginner battle group video. Uh, you can tell by the amount that I'm celebrating that this has not gone well. But we finally got a victory in quick play. <laughs> 2,140 kills to 1,900 losses. It was still very hairy. It was still very hairy. 
uh, despite that. Personally, Night Cav, right now, the patch that I'm playing, yeah, I don't really recommend it for beginners. Um, it just doesn't... I don't know whether it... Like, is this me? I feel like the game is exceptionally difficult in 1v1 for new players or casual players or less experienced players and, and casual players that may have left the game that are coming back or that just don't play 1v1 very often. Maybe you play loads of team games, but you do enjoy 1v1 and you kind of try and drop into a 1v1 game now and then, especially after watching my midweek casts of Steel Division 2 and you watch El Bowser versus Gonzo and you're like, yeah, I love 1v1. Let's go play a 1v1 game. Smash, smash, smash. Losing 10 games in a row for every victory. That is how I'm feeling right now. I just feel like the common combat personally the, the the gun range changes just add such a level of depth that i really enjoy it and i'm enjoying 1v1 in that sense but the infantry com like stuff just dies so quickly that unless you're on it and you're dead you're there microing over units when they're at the exact point they're getting engaged so you can make snap decisions you're just going to lose the units now that really benefits the high skill level players, those in Division 1 of, of Steel Division 2, because their micro is exceptional, their map awareness exceptional, their decision making exceptional, the speed they make decisions at exceptional. They know exactly, as soon as they see an engagement between two infantry units, they already know which infantry unit's going to win, whether their infantry units are going to win, whether they can leave that engagement going. And, and let the units win or whether they feel like the units are going to lose and they immediately can pull back that units and find a different way to engage. They know that immediately within a split second they can make those decisions, whereas a casual player and not so good player, it, like it takes me a moment to look at the situation and think, am I going to win that? No, I need to pull back my units from that situation and before I can make those decisions, my units are already dying or losing five, six, seven, basically two thirds of the squad and so are therefore redundant in future combat situations. I just feel like this is a difficult game right now in 1v1 and although enjoyable, the gun change rangers, just the, the rest just is stressful and overwhelming to a more casual player and i am struggling i will openly say that i am struggling to play this game in 1v1 so picking up a victory like this i am celebrating it this i've played this division probably nine times i think and this is the first victory in quick play i actually recorded the game against ai because i've become that unconfident at my own abilities and I don't think this division is particularly strong right now. You've seen it in a beginner battle group and you're probably not going to play it after watching this, but I guess the battle group is there. It will, it will certainly perform against the AI, definitely. Against human players, I don't know whether it is just this patch or whether the game has moved in a direction that, that is more difficult. And so playing any kind of deck, apart from the very meta almost exploitative decks to exploit mechanics and current balance with quick play that is what it feels like i mean you saw the rush that that player put out there with those cheap half tracks that's what i personally feel like an exploitative um gamble on the the mechanics and the balance that is currently in the game i don't know whether nico joe i've not i don't know the leaderboard i don't know where any of the players are since the leaderboard reset i don't go in there because i don't personally get any gratitude from the leaderboard i play quick play games and really i just use it as a way to get 1v1 games i don't i don't really care too much about the result I'd, I'd like to win you know we all like to win don't we to be fair i'd like the result to be about 50 50 that makes sense doesn't it you win 50 percent, you lose 50 percent. that seems a fair and balanced kind of mark of how a matchmaker should work but i feel like the way that players are bringing in a half track heavy game right now I'm here in Deutschland. Anything with with cheap half tracks to rush forwards early on is uh, exceptionally strong right now. That is what I'm being told. And very high skill level players in Division One of Steel Division League are um, 
are communicating each with each other on discords to try and build these incredibly efficient meta decks just to farm kills on the leaderboard now i think you can tell from my tone my feelings about that whether it's right or not well it is just <laughs> who am i to say whether that's right or not but it in one sense i have a feeling that it just for me it doesn't suit the game really i don't know i might be overstepping my boundaries here i have in the past uh, argued for certain changes and things like the time limit which i know a lot of you that watch the videos you know don't necessarily agree with it so once i made an argument i try to put my opinion out there and then and then leave it really uh, i've learned that because i did go on quite a lot about time limits in the past so i've stopped talking about it although briefly mentioned it <laughs> but yeah am i am i overstepping the mark the, the, what i feel though is if you were a casual or a new player you can win with this deck But whether you will win with this deck is personally, I think, unlikely. <laughs> um, I, th I might rephrase that. If you're a casual or new player, I think you are unlikely to win with this deck. It doesn't mean that you can't win with the deck. I think if you are a skilled player, you stand a much better chance of winning. But yeah, for casual and new players, I don't think this is in this current patch that we are right now. I just don't think this is the deck to suit this patch. Whether things change, you might watch this video in six months, the game might have changed. But unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of doing these videos, you know, constantly updating them. There's like over 50 divisions right now. It's going to take me long enough just to do a first video and the dog's moaning in the background. So, you know there are my thoughts those are my thoughts you're getting them raw you, you're getting them raw hopefully you understand my feelings and yeah they are meant in a a way to hopefully improve the game i am always looking to improve this game i take no i try to objectively put forward suggestions to improve the game i don't make suggestions in a way to further my own ambitions in the game because i'm not got any because i'm very bad <laughs> i used to play competitively and i got to division three of still division league and but that's going to be no longer i'm not going to play competitively anymore it's too stressful for me and even playing in quick play i mean you can tell the this is becoming emotional and stressful and i don't know whether that's the right game personally it didn't feel like that way in the past it never felt the, the, the stress that i was feeling in this game and in quick play games that i've played now i felt in competitive play and i was putting that stress on myself in competitive play but i am now feeling that in quick play i didn't used to feel that way but now i am i always felt like i could come into quick play and i wasn't going to win every game but i thought i had a depending on you know if it was a division one player i mean it's still the same now but i always felt like i had a chance whereas i'm going into quick play now and yes i've been on a break but i feel like my school players my school level has come up enough to enter quick play again uh, i'm no worse than a casual or less experienced player entering this game and this is my point i just feel like the game environment for these new players, especially new players that pick up the game, is horrible. <laughs> I think it's horrible to the point where I'm almost recommending that new players don't go in 1v1. I genuinely, I've, I said that in my Discord to my supporters uh, in, the, in my private supporter channel that I'm almost at the point where I re don't recommend new players to enter the 1v1 arena, which is just horrible i don't want to be in this situation i don't want to feel this way the, the the game doesn't exist unless this player is playing the game so we've got to at least try and give new players a chance at getting into it but what is their experience right now hopefully patches i mean this patch i think everybody admits is a mistake right now and i think eugen admit that uh, they've got a few things wrong with this patch 
um, I think they've admitted that in general chat. <laughs> hopefully. But <laughs> um, well, hopefully things will get sorted out soon. Hopefully things will get sorted out soon. Because if they don't get sorted out and this continues, and the level of 1v1, especially in quick play, is so high that I am struggling then unfortunately i will have to stop the beginner battle group videos because what is the point of recommending battle groups for new new and less experienced players if you can't use them and win with them the point is that yeah it's not going to be the most meta battle group out there because i can't deliver that patches change it so if i was to try and deliver an absolute meta defining deck well it could become obsolete in one week whereas at least making a versatile flexible deck that beginners can pick up and have a chance with well that's going to stand the test of time hopefully but what's the point if you have no chance of going into 1v1 and winning just because your experience level is even an experienced player you're playing 300 hours can, it might not be up there playing 50 hours a week or i don't know whether people play that it seems quite a lot but at least 10 maybe 20 hours a week if if somebody playing two or three hours a week but is a very experienced player who's played 300 hours can't get wins in quick play then how do i produce these videos that's my question to you maybe if you have watched my mini rant i will say this is kind of a rant but it's an emotion it's not a rant it's an emotional plea i would say <laughs> I don't want this to come across as a rant. It's more an emotional outpouring of feeling. <laughs> um, out onto the battlefield. Onto the battlefield, into the arena, as the doc would say. Let's talk about the kills. Let's leave that behind. The Osnaz, I feel, were the saviour. And they are superb in this desk, at deck. I mean, the specialist awesome nature of the ninth cab, which gives them this great feeling of being a unique division is the osnaz they are raiders but they are the original raiders of steel division 2 they go behind enemy lines i think they were originally uh partisan units russian partisan units uh, that were very well equipped almost the special forces uh, not i don't know whether i'm right to necessarily call them the very first special forces because obviously we have the sas um, but it definitely, I think the first, the incarnation of special forces uh, f f for the, the Soviets, for the Russians, as far as I understand it. And the Osnaz, with those bazookas, the Raider tag, the Specialized, they can do the dirtier on the enemy vehicles. And they did so in this game, picking up uh, the savior of that half trap push in the center. I mean, I wasn't really micro in there, but. Thank God we have an Osnaz in that area because, he, the, you know, you can clearly see that's five vehicles down. They're 30 points and between you and me, they possibly could get a little bit cheaper, but not revealing any details. Actually, the details will probably be already out by the time this video gets released. <laughs> um, but yeah, very efficient. I mean, what's a Puma? It's probably the same cost as an Osnaz and we're taking two of those out. Uh, two 10 point half tracks and a five point half track, I think. Uh, they might be actually no they're two three four slash one so i think they're probably uh more than that because they're recon uh off tracks aren't they so yeah Osnaz has the savior of that center town along with the emcha that i had there thank god i allocated that unit as well two pumas three pumas down uh, and a couple of half tracks as well thank god for the emchas and the Osnaz. It used to be that this division is a base game division. So if you're looking for a base game division, a specialist infantry base game division that you want to thematically play with, because I'm not quite sure it's up there to actually get you consistent wins, then this is the one for you. And these were one of the originals with the m um, for the Shermans as well. But a lot of Soviet divisions now have the M4 with them. Oh, passionate plea of uh, consist consistent or... Um, Hello, a lot of talk in there from the newly crowned Alpha Bird. Perhaps I deserve the previous name that I've just left behind. The Emcha here as well, picking up another pum two Puma kills. How many Pumas went down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Counting Pumas with the Alpha Bird. Eight kills down. <sighs> I'm still on a high. I mean, I will say that for Steel Division 2. When I win a game in Steel Division 2, I am, like, the adrenaline is hitting me hard. Like, endorphins rushing through. Whew. Man, 
<laughs> the Osnaz here are picking up the Panther D kill, and they were a fraction from getting a second Panther D kill, but they were one man down at that point. Dubinsky, the actual last Osnaz in that little squad there, just got taken out before he could fire the bazooka off and get that second Panther D kill. Uh, we actually had a Zist 3 come in here and pick up a Panther D and a Panzer 4 H. Zist 3 still a great unit, not as good as it was due to the range changes. But if you fight at the right range, you can pick up the kills. And that is a um, good tip. That is a mantra that you need to get used to playing with the Soviets now, especially if you're a new casual less experienced player you need to get used to fighting at the right range and this is another thing that the top one percent you know the top 20 30 players in the game have they know the rangers and me they are playing enough games consistently hours after hours night after night they know the rangers inside out so you know you need to make sure you're fighting at the right range now if that means that you click on the unit um and you check with the i key you know the unit stats and you check the range and then you use the line of sight to get into the right range it's going to take you some more micro but if you don't do that you leave you leave your unit exposed it will get shot before it fires on the enemy panther and a zist 3 gun there will not take down that panther that is a great trade for the russians and you need to be able to do that especially with this divisions this division and if you look at the kill list that, that's about it really uh, I think the, the Nico Joe's response, I think he was too reliant on small pockets of forces, especially like tanks. He, I don't want to say the word spam because that word's divisive and also not always correct because you can spam out a hell of a lot of tanks. But if you spread them across the entire front, that's different. You can have the same amount of tanks spread across the entire front as you've got in about a 500 meter radius circle. But one you could consider spam and the other you wouldn't say was spam. But it, do you know what I mean? So you've got to be careful using the word spam. But I felt Nico Joe was too reliant on small pockets of armoured forces and not um, careful enough. And he didn't cover his front well enough, did he? I mean, we picked up a lot of flags because we just had a, a one unit in the area uh, and we were picking up flags for that reason. So you've got to be careful if you're a casual, less experienced or new player to the game that you are covering the whole front line. Man, the Zenar OBR85 uh, mod that we brought onto the hill, it only got the Panzer IV H kill on the 7-1, but man, we needed those kills. And there's this two gun as well with the Panzer IV H kill. We, we were under pressure there towards the end. I hope you felt the pressure. I was under pressure. We needed to do that right-hand push, though. We hadn't have pushed that right-hand side. You know, once he got the Panthers on the road, again, good response, bringing the smoke. This is what I mean. Like, I don't feel like I'm a that bad a player. I Once he got Panthers on the road, the only way to get back in there was to deploy smoke, you know? So we did that. We got the smoke in there, and we got some units forward. So I don't feel like I'm responding in a bad way i feel i feel like i'm playing the game decently enough but i'm just finding it in incredibly difficult to to pick up wins right now whether it's just this one deck whether it's other things i don't know but but yeah i, I feel like we responded well and i feel like the attack on the right hand side needed to happen and we did it well Man, the endorphins are still rushing. Let's have a look at the losses, just to uh, have a look at things. The Focke Wolf, again, I think our, our air response was pretty decent. I couldn't tangle with the Focke Wolf one on one. You can't tangle with Focke Wolf 190s one on one. Even the fighter bomber variants, you can't tangle with them head on. Your best choice is to get an AA piece in the area and then try and drag the unit over your AA piece, getting fighting over your AA, so you get the advantage two on one, one from the ground, one from the sky. That's the kind of play that you need to kind of build into your game. And, and we did that, and we worked well, because although we lost some Focke-Wolf 190s, I think we did get the kills. We at least got one here with the Xenot 37, and I'm sure I picked up a second as well. Oh no, we chased him over his lines, didn't we? And then he brought in the SDKF said seven ones, and we we couldn't quite get that that second kill. But we certainly got the first Focke Wolf one nighters, and then they aren't. I mean, they're probably a bit too cheap, I think, for the work that they do on the field. 
But yeah, I mean, he was desperate to cover that left-hand side. He basically had nothing there. We only had a couple of Ognuichigis on the way, but he was scared as hell. Wolfgang. <laughs> Wolfgang, the perfect name. Wolfgang prowls the left-hand side as we looked at it. Oh, still endorphins, still high. Hands of Paul H. Uh, I reckon this was, no, this was in the center and the push through as well. Did take out my AA. Once he got that center position on the road with those Panthers, we knew the push that was coming through. We responded again. We responded well with the off map. It was the perfect response. It's why you got to have off maps in your 1v1 decks because as a defender, off maps, whew, so good. Such a good unit. Um, and my personal opinion, the way that artillery and off maps work is, is so difficult to balance between the game modes of 1v1 and 10v10. And I don't feel like it's right, but I genuinely am not sure what you could do um, to, to fix things. And it's probably too late if you think about doing any kind of major fixing. I, th I don't think Eugene is going to be doing any real major mechanic fixing now i feel like steel division 2 is probably at a place where their major mechanic work is done and this is probably going to be it for the rest of the life for steel division 2 i think they're probably going to put, bring out dlcs they're going to concentrate on single player campaigns bring out dlcs um, with divisions and, and new single player campaigns tied into that and we saw the nemesis divisions as well but i feel like mechanics are not going to be eugene's focus now i think i think it they well they've admitted they're working on a new game what that game is nobody knows but i think a uh, fair few can have a reasonable guess at what that is um and i think the work on Studio division 2 that they will do is just to release uh dlc now which is fine and actually i would love to see some western front dlcs with the campaign system they've got the single player campaign Ooh, i think that really would be good to see where was I? So, yes, what I was actually talking about was once he got onto the road, we needed that off map there. I mean, he was going to push through. He took out my AA. They were big losses for me, but I don't really feel like I could do much else. I was trying to stop him before he got there. That's why I put the emergency off map down. So, yeah, losing the AA was not great, but I perhaps could have unloaded it a little bit further back on top of the hill, but I think... I was gambling that I could have held the town, and I think most people would have put it somewhere in the position that I did. I think the the OBR85 was right to get that up on the hill. Right, there we have it. There we have it. Let's have a quick look at his um, Pumas uh, in particular. Let's see whether they actually traded well. Well, one pick, did pick up the Amtures there and the Amtures. One thing I have noticed is my efficient shot. The way that I'm using efficient shot right now is not correct i've got it applied to all units immediately from the off and i need to need to change that in the interface because that's meaning my my amateurs weren't firing on the pumas there initially until i turned off efficient shot so i'm and they can easily penetrate pumas so that was um poor on my front so i do need to change that but that's more of just a thing in the interface that i need to switch hopefully i mean how long have i been talking now after the game probably a 20 minutes final thoughts i'm i don't think i'm going to change the deck from from what i've played in this game i've played quite a number of games with this deck i probably played i i might update it with text to say exactly how many games i've played but i reckon it might be around eight might be actually a little bit less than that with this deck um and i'm talking quick play games against you know human players on the quick play <laughs> and this is the first victory i've got i can you can tell by the emotion that's poured out from me since so do i recommend this to casual new less experienced players not really and that's a big shame because i've just spent a good video you know i've just spent a good while producing producing this video and you've spent a good while watching this video and i'm sorry i am genuinely sorry i hope i haven't wasted your time I hope at least I've made the last 20 minutes of me talking entertaining. <laughs> I'm sure it was entertaining. Listening to the outpouring of emotion, I'm sure it was entertaining. I hope I've made it entertaining because honestly, I don't really suggest that you do play this game. This game, this deck, 
uh, the deck's great against the AI. Take it into the AI and play against the AI. And it's great as a thematic deck to play with those Osnaz units behind enemy lines. And if you want to do that, you're probably better off actually putting more of those Osnaz units in if, if you want to go with that, you know, kind of um, role play kind of style. Um, or if you're playing against friends and you want to kind of maybe play in that, in that way and get some cool video footage and screenshots and all that kind of stuff, then put more of them in. That is the kind of seller on this division, the Osnaz. That's the special point of this, the unique aspect of this division. But if you're going into quick play, I don't think you should take this deck into quick play on the current patch that I'm talking about now. This is the 28th of May, 2021. So I don't, I'm not not going to touch these again in it's in um i'm not going to do another beginner battle group video for them so this is the best i can do i'm afraid hopefully it's good enough for you so having reviewed everything um i have actually made a few changes to the deck i reviewed the footage some of my reasoning and i decided that um there were a couple of changes that i should make so i removed a card of two star m shot from b phase now that takes five tanks off you, but it does give you three points um, to play with by removing that card. And I feel like you're not going to use 15 Emptures in B phase. So ultimately that will transfer over to C phase. And I just felt, you know, you could lose that card and keep the extra three points. The dog is just running up and down in the background. So having those three points, I'm able to actually purchase in two new units and switch things around a slight bit in the infantry tab. So I put into the deck the C-Face card of Kazaki Rizvedka. That comes with the M3A1 Rizvedka half track. That can help you in the end game, kind of clear up some infantry. But this is more a unit for if you're opposing another infantry division. If you're against an armored division, it's going to be a bit more difficult to use this half track because uh, an armored division generally is going to have the tank control. You're relying on your ZIS 2 guns in the AT tab and your Air Force, your Lag 3s and any close range infantry to take down those heavy tanks. It's going to be quite hard to do so. Using half tracks towards the end of the game is not always going to be possible if you're facing armored divisions. But if you're facing infantry divisions, they they can become quite useful. And then the other thing is this uh, squad of Kazaki Rizvedka. They are actually a decent squad. I mean, they're pretty much equivalent to a Kazaki PPS H squad or a you know an Avto Mishiki squad. So they are still a good squad. Unfortunately, they are not quite cost effective at the moment. You're going to be paying extra. But I think in the future, that price might come down slightly. So the other reason that I put them in is because, yes, they're a good squad. And in C-Face, you don't have any CQC infantry. I mean, you might not need them because you've got 32 units of Kazaki Mozin. So you can afford to lose some units. Um, but really, yeah, these can go in to heavy forests in, in particular in c phase and really help you out if you run out of the kazaki ppsh in b phase and uh the cqc infantry in a phase so that was the reason i put those kazaki rizvedka in that was one of the points that i spent with the uh extra three points gained the other was a unit of kazaki maxim i just really felt when reviewing the footage that in A phase, it was the I had the Kazaki SVT unit in, and this unit, although I think is would I would normally put this in the deck for a beginner, new player, less experienced player, more casual player. I th I feel like the range might be an issue with this unit. Only firing those SVTs off at 500 meter range. I feel like a, not, a lot of new players might sit these on the edge of forests and not realize that they're not going to engage at the, the full 750 meter range. So they could have Panzergrenz sitting opposite them or, or Kazakis or Guardia squads firing off the light machine guns and these Kazaki SVTs will just get mowed down and won't fire back. So... I just think removing from them them from the deck makes it easier for uh, newer players to to understand 
you just don't have to deal with that issue. And by putting the Kazaki Maxim in, that gives you the extra long range kind of, they're not long range infantry, but they can perform that long range fire support kind of suppression role. So having that card in there, I feel like it allows me to take out the Kazaki SVT, which makes it easier. In the Kazaki's SVT's place, I put in the Kazaki PPSH. Now, these are just a lot easier to deal with because you know that you have to use them at 100 meters. Where the Where is the best place to use units at 100 meters? Well, it's in heavy forests. Kazaki PPSH can actually perform really well in buildings as well because they can ambush enemy infantry squads. But in terms of this infantry lineup, in A phase, Kazaki... The uh, mainline Kazaki squads, these are your line infantry. These are to be used liberally across the front, uh, on the edges of tree lines, in forests, places where you would normally use your line infantry with a light machine gun. Then you've got your Kazaki PPSH. These are mostly to be used in the heavy forest, so they can fight at that 100 meter range. And then you've got your Sapari. These can supplement the Kazaki. These are mostly for city environments because they can supplement the Kazaki with the DP-28, which is more likely to fire at, um, well, he's better off fighting at longer distance. They can enter the heavy forest and do decently with the TNT, but that's why the Kazaki PPSH are there. So the Sapari are more for CQC in the cities, uh, and, and then your Osnaz are there for the Bazooka. So that's kind of the infantry lineup for a phase and why i've made those changes i think putting the kazaki maxim in allowed me to take out the svts because otherwise only having 12 units of infantry that can fire at long range i, I guess the sapper were in there as well it just felt like too short too too few so therefore getting those eight kazaki maxims in can help that out putting the kazaki res vedka in could provide that c phase cqc heavy forest infantry and, you know, taking out that card of Emtia is not... I mean, you could, to be fair, replace... If you wanted to, you could replace the Emtia Comrotti in uh, a, a phase with the uh, Emtia. I'm not going to do that in this case because I do think having a leader there that you can call in with your other you know m4s is useful so i will leave that in for new players they don't just have to worry about having leaders in places because they're automatically going to use it because you're forced to <laughs> based on the deck so that's kind of what i was going for in some sense hopefully i didn't make this final explanation too long thanks very much for watching i, I don't even know if you're going to use this deck because of my other comments about 1v1 but i am trying to make these videos for new players and let me know your thoughts if you do use the deck but if you are a an experienced player and you're going to trash this deck be aware that i am trying to set up a deck for somebody who's very new to the game or or very inexperienced and these decks might well just be used in against the ai um rot they are there to be able to go into quick play but this is just a deck for somebody to pick up and play the knife cav that they've never played the knife cav before and they just want a deck and they want to try it out so this is not supposed to be an ultra competitive deck it's supposed to have a chance in 1v1 and we we did finally get a 1v1 quick play victory against a human player but it's not supposed to be like ultra competitive thanks very much for watching i am alphabet i'm gonna leave this video there